In this video, I'm going to cover the features and capabilities of the Sales Accelerator that resides inside Dynamics 365 Sales. My name is Jesse Buchels. I'm a pre-sales architect at Stone Ridge Software. My focus is on Dynamics 365 CRM, or customer engagement, as well as the Power Platform. I live in Barnesville, Minnesota, in a small town in northwest Minnesota. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to reach out. So today at a high level, we're going to cover how to create segments. I want to show you how you can leverage sequences to help guide your sellers through their selling process of qualifying a lead, converting to an opportunity, and some other ways that we can use sequences as well. We're going to talk about lead distribution rules. So lead comes in, no more do we have to manually go out there and find the correct seller and assign that lead. We can leverage lead distribution rules to handle that for us. And then we're going to talk about some premium features. So relationship <clears throat> analytics. Use the activity history of a seller with a contact or an account and helps calculate KPIs based on the inter interaction. So there's a separate tab on your form that's going to display a lot of these KPIs. Very helpful. Predictive lead and opportunity scoring. So this is a feature that's going to help you prioritize your, your sales leads, your, your opportunities based on a scoring model built in CRM. Who knows whom? This is a neat feature. Uh, helps you if, you if you're working a new lead and maybe there's an, an existing contact or an account in the system that is, for example, a similar domain and you've got another seller on the team that's been working with them um, or there's some activity out there, that's going to help them make an introduction for you. It's going to show you different, different team members that might have a connection there. Uh, so again, really helpful tool. And then conversation intelligence. So this is probably one of my favorite it, premium features uh, when it comes to the sales accelerator. This is going to record your calls for you. Um, it's going to analyze those calls. It's going to transcribe them, provide sentiment analysis, extract keywords and mentions, and then even make suggestions for activities or next steps with that contact or that leader opportunity. So let's go ahead and jump right into the demo. In this demo environment, uh, very, very standard um, sales application here that we're looking at. Uh, so probably, uh, if you're using sales already today, probably uh, uh, feels very familiar. One thing that you might have noticed if you're already using sales is the sales accelerator showed up here. Um, it could have showed up in the last few months or even uh, prior to that. Maybe you haven't had an opportunity to dive in or just didn't know what it was all about. So depending on your license, you may already have access to some of these features. So if I drill down into the Sales Accelerator, first thing that we're going to see is this list that shows up. And this is going to be anything that, that I need to be working on. This is my work list here. So you can see it's organized by date. And you have different filters and ways to, to sort these items. So right now it's sorted by due date. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to collapse my site map over here. I want a little bit more real estate. Uh, maybe less confusion. So now I'm focused more on my work list and I've got my main form over here on the right. So right now what we're looking at is let's go ahead and select Avery Howard here. And it looks like this is actually an opportunity. So Avery Howard is a CEO of Trey Research and here's the name of that opportunity, uh, the potential estimated revenue that we're looking at here. And down below it, it's basically what we're doing is we're, we're seeing the sequence here. So the next step with this particular opportunity is to send an introduction email. So where we're seeing our sequences on our form is going to be in this area right here. And you can see that the sequence that we're looking at is the opportunity nurturing sequence. And the next step, so step one for this is going to be sending an introduction email. Now, when we see the, the sequence layout here in just a little bit, you can see where we're, we're going to be able to add in wait conditions as well. So you can see once we complete this step, we send that introduction email. The next step is to wait five days. So there's a waiting condition there. After that, step two is going to be to call the customer. And then step three is to send a thank you email. So we're guiding that seller through different activities to help them complete this sale. And this is an example of how to use this on an opportunity. Over in the top right here, you can see where we're leveraging opportunity scoring. So right now, this is a grade A opportunity. 
It's got an opportunity score of 86, and these are the factors that are contributing to that lead score. Down below that, we've got relationship health. So we're, we're monitoring this um, on the back end here where we, this is a good relationship. It's steady. We've got our next interactions and our last interactions laid out. And then as far as this form goes, we've got our timeline down below here. So uh, very standard, right? Everybody is used to the timeline. Um, we're capturing stakeholders, et cetera. So this is just a different form that's more focused on the different items that come with the sales accelerator. If I open up my relationship analytics, I talked a little bit about this when we talked about premium features. We're going to see some additional information here. So um, customer interactions, we're monitoring customer interactions, emails, meetings, phone calls, uh, additional information, different KPIs that might be really important to us around email engagement, send receive ratio, uh, down below similar deals one, and then relationship activities. So uh, a lot of really important information that we can capture in relationship analytics. So if I come back into the main summary tab here, how we can leverage these sequences is really neat. So if I've got my Outlook integration uh, stood up, which is a native integration with Dynamics 365, I can go ahead and just select email. So as a, as a seller, when I come in and I look at Avery Howard in this opportunity, I can just select email. That's gonna open up my message Keep this in the background for me. It's going to pre-populate my email address as well as the person that I'm sending it to, which is Avery Howard. It's going to also go ahead and add a template. If I've, I've got an email template that I want to automatically dump in so that my seller doesn't even have to really go through that process, they can modify or add to it. Great, no problem. But we can go ahead and leverage email templates as well. And if you've got a signature, we can have that pre-populated. So from here, I can go ahead and send this out. This is a demo environment, so um, obviously not truly sending anything out here. But when we, once we send this out, it's going to automatically complete this step for us and then move into that wait condition where it's going to then, in five days, load the next step, which is to call the customer. So you can see how it moved on from Avery Howard, and now I've got my next opportunity here waiting for me to start working on. So same thing opportunity nurturing, we're going to start moving through that process there. And if I look at the rest of these, that's, all, you know, we're all really in the similar um, situation here where we're, we were looking at that first step. Uh, but I can see what that step is right in my work list view. I'm going to open up Lily Piles here because another really cool feature that I wanted to show was that conversation intelligence. So once we've got conversation intelligence enabled, I can come in and catch up on my call summaries. And we're going to be able to view this from the timeline as well. So this is just an example of what you might expect if you're leveraging uh, conversation intelligence. So this call took place on June 15th. It was two minutes and 10 seconds long between myself and the customer. Um, over here on the right, we've got the full transcript. And we can export this transcript if we want to. Down on the bottom then, we've got the recording. So I could go and I could play the recording. You can see where I've got sentiment analysis. At what point during the conversation was it positive, neutral, or negative? And it's highlighted there. You can see where keywords are being set in bold, where we're extracting those. Maybe it's a product that we sell or a competitor. Um, it could be a price point. So we're extracting a lot of those as well. So if I come over into my mentions, you can see where it's pulling those out of the conversation different action items, maybe the system is suggesting that we, the next step for us would be to send an email, but it could be, you know, a variety of things. Um, so the system is going to do that work for you and make those suggestions. Then we can act on them from here. Okay, so let's take a look at the back end, what this might look like with some of the setup options. So I'm going to move into the Sales Accelerator workspace. And from here, if I drill down into my sequences, segments, or assignment rules, we're going to be able to see what that looks like to configure. And it's really um, a nice user-friendly editor that we're working with here. You can see we've got two out of the box, uh, lead nurturing and an opportunity nurturing. So if we open up the lead nurturing segment here, or sequence, sorry, we can view this, see how it's set up, and then modify it if we want to as well. So here's that sequence when it starts. First step, send an introduction email. You can see where we've layered in that email template and then followed that up with a wait condition for five days. 
So you could set that to days or hours. Maybe we wanted to uh, set this for just a couple hours after we send that introduction email to send a follow-up for a phone call, for example. So this one is built out with different weight conditions, different activities that we're leveraging here. And then once you get those active, so this uh, particular sequence, once it's active, we can actually come in and see what are the leads that are connected to this one. So right now there are 10 leads that are in this sequence. One of them is progressed to step two. So it's a completed step one, we're on step two. Um, next step is to send a reminder email. The rest of these we're still waiting for our seller to complete that introduction email. So we're monitoring the connected leads from here as well. Very similar on the opportunity nurturing. Um, we can go in and we can view that sequence. And uh, just at some different steps um, that, you know, as an example to show what that might look like. If I wanted to create a new sequence, very straightforward, I can come in. Um, I can start from a template if I want to. Um, and depending on the record type, again, leads and opportunities you can leverage, but you could also use this for accounts or contacts. Maybe you want to leverage sequences anytime an account renewal is coming up, or we want to create a, you know, a sequence for our contacts in some way. So starting from blank here, all I have to do is choose the record type, provide a name for it, and then I can start choosing what I want those steps to look like. So right here, all I have to do is hit the plus button and then start picking away at the different actions that I want to take place. You can see up top here, we can set conditions. We can also leverage commands, or if you've got LinkedIn Navigator that you're using, we can go ahead and leverage some LinkedIn uh, actions as well. Next, let's take a look at our segments. So segments, we've got one stood up here, leads in Minnesota. Segments are how we're grouping specific leads or opportunities, for example. Um, and then ultimately, we want to we want to take those segments and use them in our sequences, use them in our lead distribution roles. So leads in Minnesota, this one is very straightforward. If I come into it, we can actually show what the editor looks like here. But all we're doing is filtering on the state equals Minnesota. Right, so pretty straightforward. And building out a new segment here is also quite easy. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna call this test. And let's go into the builder just to show what that looks like. It's very user friendly. Any attribute or field on the record is something that we can use to filter out our leads. So if I wanted to come in here and maybe we're going to filter it based on a city or based on a budget, uh, a lot of different ways that we can filter it. So again, any anything on the record, we can go ahead and leverage as a uh, filter. So maybe this one is going to be for those in California, right? So any, any California lead that comes in and you could continue to add additional uh, filters or attributes here to our um, design. I'm gonna back out of this one. And I want to move on to assignment rules. So these are the lead distribution rules that I talked about. Now, when I come in here, we want to start with creating new rules, right? Uh, because essentially out of the box, you're not going to have any. Um, but prior to doing that, we have to make sure that we've got the right team members enabled for access to these leads that we're going to be distributing. So right now, I've got five sellers in the system. Um, to go ahead and define team access, if you're coming in for the first time, what you want to do is come in and you can either set it to all security roles or maybe you got specific security roles. So I'm just saying anyone with a salesperson security role or sales manager role, I want to be a part of these lead distribution roles. And you can go ahead and you can start adding additional security roles here as well. Again, that's going to define who's eligible for lead distribution. Once we do that, we can go in and we can stand up rules. Rules. Very straightforward. So I want to say um, customers in Minnesota. And now we can come in, we can leverage those segments as well. So we have that segment for leads in Minnesota. You could just skip this and you could just say, really, I want any, any new lead coming in. Um, we're just going to say all leads, right? So if we don't want to leverage a segment, any lead coming in, how do we want to distribute those? You know, this is this would be the real basic. We're not leveraging any of those segments. This could be going to any seller. You might have specific sellers, or maybe if you're using teams or sellers with matching attributes. 
So maybe you, you have sellers in different territories. So you want um, to create a segment for each territory, and then you want to create an elite assignment rule based on those territories. So if I said any seller here, now I can come in and determine how do I want to distribute those? Is it round robin, basically equal across the board? Or is it going to be more load balancing? So we want to see, does seller A have 10, up, 10 leads to work right now, but seller B's only got four? Well, the system is going to monitor that and distribute accordingly. We can also leverage seller's schedules. So if your seller is going in and creating um, schedules, so maybe they only work three days a week, or maybe they work weekends, uh, the system can monitor that and distribute leads accordingly as well. And once we're ready, we can go ahead and click Create Rule. That's going to stand this up and start distributing leads accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this for now. I'm going to come back to the overview here, and that's going to kind of lay out what some of these additional features are for me. So I talked about some of the premium features that were available with the Sales Accelerator. And down here below, if you wanted to drill down into these more, there are some great links to Microsoft Learn pages that are going to cover these in more detail. The premium forecasting, lead scoring, who knows whom, relationship analytics. And then down at the very bottom, conversation intelligence that we talked about and we showed a, an example of. I hope this helped you better understand the Sales Accelerator. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out. Always have a great day.